After a violent home invasion in 2009, Maureen Moore moved into a retirement village. I walked in on burglars, four burglars, who treated me rather badly, and I was afraid of staying in the house by myself anymore. The retired child psychologist and teacher picked a pinnacle living retirement village in Melbourne. I must admit, I did not do a lot of uh, investigation because the burglars walking in on them had made me so afraid of living alone in a house. Things started to deteriorate when Maureen took Pinnacle to VCAT, the Victorian Civil and Administrative Tribunal, after flooding damaged her library room. And it took nearly two years. But did, did things change? Yes. They fixed that room but did not do anything about my ruined bookcase and about 500 books I had to throw out. And then after that, they began to do much nastier things, such as one manager who always kept saying, you are confused, <laughs> as if you had Alzheimer's. She says one manager tried to block her car. Deliberately, smiling at me and walking off and not coming back for 15 minutes, thus making me late for the doctor. Maureen, who has no immediate family, started to feel targeted. How would you sum up what they've done to you? They have turned what could have been a pleasant old age into sheer hell. I'm sorry. In 2019, things got even worse for her when the village implemented a smoking ban, even inside her home, after a vote by residents. I agree that smoking is not good for you. When did you start smoking? I was 16. I took one cigarette and unfortunately, I'm the kind of person who got addicted. But I did give up in 2018, with a great deal of help, I took it up again because I was under so much stress and I am ashamed of it. First came a series of warnings, then came an official breach notice. Well, the first email came and just said, we think you have been smoking uh, stop it immediately. Then more and more emails started coming and I brought up the fact that my contract said it was okay. In one letter sent just before Christmas 2020, Pinnacle listed a series of breaches she had to address by January 27. It flagged a general state of uncleanliness and told her to organise someone to professionally repaint ceilings, doors and walls. Furniture, soft furnishings, carpet and even the underlay needed to be cleaned. In what they claimed was an attempt to remove the putrid stench within and permeating from the apartment. The walls were not yellow. There was nothing wrong with the place. Maureen was supported by Housing for the Aged Action Group, known as HAG. It is, is outrageous. A non-profit which helps elderly residents. HAG visited Maureen and said the house was clean and tidy and not in a poor state. Of course, by this time, Maureen's in her mid-80s. It's built on a hill, so she can't walk out of the village to be able to smoke. We proposed that there be an area which she was able to smoke that wouldn't impact on other residents, um, and we tried to negotiate with the village management. Unfortunately, they dug their heels in, and so Maureen had the threat of eviction over her head for two years. The pressure on Maureen kept mounting, 
and Hag raced to VCAT to stop Pinnacle evicting her. Three days before Christmas 2023, Pinnacle threatened to go back to VCAT to evict Maureen and get her to pay its legal costs. Did you feel worried what was going to happen to you? At the beginning, I felt angry and annoyed. As the time went on, I just got more and more tired. And I was silly enough to feel like breaking into tears and I couldn't sleep at night. In fact, the doctor for a short time had to give me some pills to settle my nerves because it just got to me, what am I going to do? In January this year, while Maureen was still living in the village, Pinnacle circulated a four-page letter to residents. Titled Special Levy, it said a village resident had repeatedly breached a smoking ban that culminated in a breach and termination notice and legal action. It slugged a special levy of more than $2,000 on the residents to fund $92,000 in legal costs. I think that was to turn the residents against me. At 90 years of age, I wouldn't be able to stand up to questioning for hours by their solicitors. <laughs> and in the end, and because I was under so much stress, in the end, I, I gave in. They just were absolutely persistent in trying to find all sorts of ways to get her out of the village, coinciding with the exit fee reaching its maximum amount. Retirement villagers earn revenue when residents leave the village. That's when they charge exit fees. In Maureen's contract, the exit fees start at 2.5% of the resale price and hit a cap of 25% at 10 years. It's most profitable for them when the resident leaves. And this creates an incentive for them to be able to get rid of residents when the exit fee reaches its maximum amount. In 2019, the year the smoking ban started, Maureen's exit fee hit its 10-year cap. The village model, the financial model, gouges residents over a period of time. Maureen moved out in March this year. In May, Pinnacle offered to buy her home for $490,000, the price she paid for it in 2009, denying her any capital growth. Local property prices in that suburb increased 150% over that period. After fees, she would be left with $343,000, a big blow to her financially. It's not enough to buy a similar home in the same area or a room in aged care. The offer letter said her home was in a poor state and would take considerable time to fix at a potential cost of more than $100,000. It said the property market was subdued. If she took the offer, it would drop its legal action against her. And I was so nervous and so upset. I just, well, I was forced to give in because at 90 and not having enough money to take them to court. Pinnacle refurbished the house with a price tag of $1.1 million, spruiking it as the epitome of refined living. Were you surprised when you saw the ad in the paper for Maureen's house that they're selling it at double the price they paid her? This is how they make their money. They want the residents to, to get out um, and then they can resell the unit at a higher amount of money for the next person coming in. I would have been happy just to get back what I actually paid for it, but they didn't even pay that. How would you describe the way the retirement village treated you? I was not feeling safe. <laughs> I shouldn't say this, but at one time I contemplated suicide. I felt, I felt that bad. I'm sorry.
Maureen is not alone, and Pinnacle doesn't just hit residents with exit fees. As John Van Putin found out, monthly maintenance fees can also be a trap. Once you get in, it's almost impossible to get out. In 2021, he moved into Tudor Village in Lilydale, Melbourne. Within two years, he started having regrets. It's, it's a money-making business. All retirement villagers charge monthly service fees, which cover village management costs related to communal facilities and insurance costs. John's fees rose so much, he decided to move out. My initial thought was, how can they do this? How can they do this? If they're doing it 23% this year, what can they do next year and the year after and the year after? So I thought, I'm not gonna get trapped in this snowball effect. He moved into a rental property while the house was put up for sale. He was still being charged maintenance fees. But after 10 months, it still hadn't sold at the price he expected and the bills were mounting. I can't afford to pay rent on one property and also pay maintenance fees here as well. So I moved back in. He says it cost him $30,000 in refurbishment, staging, sales fees, rent and maintenance fees. John understands the risks of speaking out while he's still living at Tudor, but he says the industry needs reform. I don't think there's enough state regulation on, on, on the, this, the industry as such. You know, there's no watchdog looking after it. There's no way out, unless you're prepared to take a heavy financial loss. Pinnacle Living declined a TV interview. In response to a series of questions, it said no one is harassed at the villages and more than 80% of the residents voted for a smoking ban. It said the village contacted Maureen in October 2022, formally advising her she was disrupting the quiet enjoyment of her neighbours and in breach of the community's rules regarding smoking. It said she moved out this year by agreement. To suggest we somehow provoke residents to leave at any point in time of their residence for money is offensive. It said generally, residents leave our villages with more money than it cost them to buy the unit from the previous owner. Do you think it's a systemic problem or just one or two? Unfortunately, it is systemic. We have yet to see any reform. Maureen now rents month to month in another retirement village where she feels safe and happy. I don't have this constant, what's going to happen next? which wore me down so much, and I don't really want to be talked about. But at the same time, I think people like the retirement villagers have to be stopped from doing these terrible things. If this story has raised any issues for you, you can call Lifeline on 13 11 14 or Beyond Blue on 1300 22 46 36. And if you have any information about retirement villages you'd like to share with Adele, you can email us 730 at abc.net.au.